Good morning, Naomi. Everybody can hear me? Yes. Thank you. Does everybody know when spring break is? March 22nd, I believe that's when it starts. You want to repeat that, please? Um, I believe it starts March 22nd. 20, that late? Can you check that? Because we need to schedule um, a midterm exam. And I would like to, to schedule that before the, um, before this, before spring break. And um, that's the reason I'm asking. Um, and you say that it's March 22nd? I'm sorry, I got that wrong. It, it starts on March 25th. Yes, I'll be off 25th, even later. The 22nd is a Friday. You So you say that starts on Monday, the 25th? Uh, it says on the, on the website that spring break is from March 25th to March 31st. <laughs> Okay, I think um, we need to double check that. Looks, sounds to me like it's rather late. Usually they are earlier, I think. I might be wrong. But, um, well, in any case, we have to, between, uh, say, today and on Thursday, we're going to schedule the, the midterm. We would see when I, I will go to to see the, um, the academic calendar, okay? Man, so I'm asking you please to do the same uh, so we, we can schedule that um, midterm exam, okay? Okay, mm. any question? No questions? Okay, so let's wait um, two more minutes before we start. So we let other people connect, okay?
Good morning, Wilfredo. Okay, I think we can get started, okay? <clears throat> uh, Zoom just changed the, the, the whiteboard, so I need to get used to, to this. Um, let's see, I need to... <laughs> Oops. Okay. Um, <clears throat> maybe you remember that last time we saw Newton's laws and we saw the runway um, problem. So, um, do you have questions about Newton's laws or the runway problem? Okay, so let me remind you what uh, Newton's laws were about. The first law would say that any um, object will keep um, its state of movement unless it's, um, someone interacts from the outside. Uh, second law, the second law said that the force at the acceleration are proportional and the mm, proportionality constant is the mass. It's at least what we call mass in physics. And the third law was the law of action and reaction. Um, that meant that um, when an object um, exerts a force on a second object, this second object will respond with, uh, mm, with another force that will be on the first object and it will be opposing the, the original force. So um, that said, we are going to mm, talk about what we call the gravitational force. Yeah, let's talk about that. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this is um, a law that is also, good morning, Brianna. It's also um, belongs to Newton, but uh, for some reason it's not part of the uh, three laws that we learned last class. Um, this is another um, of Newton's laws and um, what it says is the following. Say that, suppose that we have two objects and the object, the two objects have masses, for example, M1 and M2. We already know what mass is. Remember that we said that mass was the constant of proportionality between the force and the acceleration. 
So here we are, we have two mm, masses and the two masses are at the distance R, for example. So the law that we are going to learn today says that any two masses, and when I say any, I mean any, it could be mm, two planets, two uh, electrons, two um, atoms, um, two um, persons, anything. Can have everything that has a mass will exert forces in between the two of them. They will have a force that we are going to name F and the force will be always the two forces will be on the same line that connects the two masses and they will be always attractive forces. Now we are going to learn about the, the magnitude of these forces and how do we do that? We go to the lab and we, we measure. And we find all this that I'm describing here, that the forces are attractive, that depend on the masses, depend on the distance, <clears throat> sorry. And we say that the force will be proportional. Remember that with this sign, we mean proportionality. So it will be proportional to the product of the masses, that means M1, M2, divided by the distance between the, the, um, the square of the distance between the masses. So this is the, the, um, the strength of the force, at least it's proportional to um, these quantities, to these magnitudes. Now, with what we want to emphasize here is that this is a proportionality and as such we don't know it we don't know it exactly so we need something here in order to make it exactly and what is going to go there will be this we say that the force will be equal to some constant times this product that i have here divided by the square of the distance. Now, this is a, a, a trick that is used very often in science. First in the lab, you find that the, the force is proportional to this magnitude and inver inversely proportional to this distance. In order to, um, to find the quality, we go to the lab and we measure this Mm, constant of proportionality. Um, for right now, we don't we don't really mind the value of this constant of proportionality. Um, it's everywhere on Google, and um, what we do mind is the fact that there is this law that there is this proportionality. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so this is what we call Newton's um, gra universal gravitational law, okay? And um, I want you to see the following. So on one hand, we had this formula, this relationship, between masses. Let me draw this in a different way. Say that here I have one mass, another mass, and this is the distance between the masses. Now, let's suppose that I have here the Earth. And I have a little object here or not so little. I just have an object that is 
on the surface of the earth. And we know that the distance of the object to the center of the earth will be the radius of the earth. Also, I will remind you that we always said, okay, I'm going to treat every single object as a point. So what do I have here? Instead of this object, instead of this object, I will have a point. It will be this point. And instead of having the earth here, I will have this point that represents the earth. And the two points will be at the distance r. I do realize that here there is a, a lot of a lot of assumptions. Okay. Here the object, the red one, is a point. The earth is a point. And like we always do in in, in sciences, we we need to idealize our um, objects of study, because that way we can simplify the study. So here we have these two objects say that this is mass is n, and this is the mass of the earth. So I have two points that are uh, exerting attraction on each other. So what is the force? I would say that the force would be G. Remember that G is absolutely un universal. The mass that I have the, is the mass of the Earth times the mass of the smaller object divided by the distance between them. And the distance between them will be the radius of the Earth squared. OK, so far? So. Let's take a look at this. F equal all these constants. G, mass of the Earth, divided by the radius of the Earth squared times the mass of this object here. So what do I get here on all this? This G, we said is a constant. M is the mass of the Earth which is also a constant. And R square refers to R, the radius of the Earth, which is also a constant. So that means that all this is a constant. On the other hand, we learn that we, we can relate the force of an object of, on Earth is the weight and it's also G times M. So we define that G, the acceleration of gravity, is big G times mass of the Earth divided by R squared. Are we okay so far? Everybody remembers this, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So I have here an expression for the Mm, acceleration of gravity that depends on the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. And T, like I said before, is universal. So that is telling me that suppose that instead of having here the Earth, this is the Moon. So if this is the Moon, I will consider here the radius of the Moon. And here, I will consider the mass of the moon. So what do I get here? I get a, a G for the moon that will be this big G that is universal times the mass of the moon divided by the radius of the moon squared. This happened to be around 
x. So, G of the moon equal 1.6 meter per second square. Remember that for the Earth is 9.8 meter per second square. Okay? So, uh, we can uh, find the acceleration of gravity in any planet just um, having the values of the mass and the uh, radius of the planet, okay? So, here's the, this force that is um, M, M divided by R square. The acceleration of gravity will be G M divided by R square. Um, well, here I'm, I'm not saying um, which radius is this is, but it could apply to any planet, okay? So I could get this way, the acceleration of gravity for any planet. Are we okay with that? Let yes. me see. Okay, cool. Um, let me see, I want to find the, the value of the, um, Big G, let me um, Google that, okay? Because I don't remember it. Just a moment. I'm right here. Okay, I get that G, Big G equals or about 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 cubic meter divided by kilogram second square. Okay, um, I'm just writing that mm, but um, it's not that it's all that important, the value. I just, um, I just want you to, 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 pay, to pay attention to the units because when you use this, um, this constant, you have to use the units. For example, you use the units in, in SI, in which case you will obtain the acceleration of gravity in SI as well, um, or MKS. And um, that way you will um, you will find solutions more easily, okay? Um, prior to the, um, the midterm exam, we are going to solve some problems, but they are really uh, simple, okay? Um, so any question about this? Okay, we are going to, to continue with um, other topics and we are going to learn about friction, okay? Remember that uh, we always said that we were considering objects that um, were not, um, they didn't have friction with the um, environment. So we are going to consider that. We are going to, to see what friction is all about. And um, let's do this. Uh, first of all, say that we have, um, for example, um, <clears throat> an inclined plane. With an, with an object on top. This could be, for example, in real life, it could be, for example, a hill um, where there is a skier here and the skier is sliding and the friction is much mm, smaller because friction on, on snow or ice is smaller. Uh, but um, let's consider here that uh, we have this object and um, we are going to assume that here, this object has this weight, 
that is mt now i can for example split this weight into two vectors they will be these two vectors what is interesting about these two vectors let me draw it in a different color just a moment so the green one is parallel to the inclined plane i will call it w parallel you remember that this is w and the blue one or bluish one is perpendicular to that plane and i will call it w perpendicular now i would assume that for example i know this angle alpha so if i know this angle alpha I can conclude that I know this angle, angle as well, because this angle is going to be alpha as well. Everybody knows why those two angles are equal? Okay. This is what happens. I have this, this plane here. And this perpendicular, correct? And I also have this line here. And this perpendicular. <clears throat> so if I know this angle, Given that the two black lines are per perpendicular to the two color lines, the angle between the color lines will be equal to the angle between the black lines, the original lines. In other words, I have this one here. that I'm making it red is perpendicular to this one. Now I will draw this one is perpendicular to this one. So when I have that situation of two lines that are perpendicular to another two lines, if I know the angle between mm, two of them, I know the angle between the other two, okay? So, are we clear with this? With this? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. So, let me erase this, and we go back to our situation where we said that we had these two angles that are alpha. So, <clears throat> This side here is opposing angle alpha. So if it is opposing angle alpha, it should be um, easy to calculate because I will have that. The, this side that is opposing alpha is equal to this other, the other side. So my W parallel will be equal to W times the sine of alpha because it's opposing alpha. And in the same way, I can write that W perpendicular will be equal to W times cosine of alpha. Why? Because mm, W perpendicular which is this guy here is adjacent to alpha. So if it is adjacent, I can write 
this relationship, okay? So once I have this angle, I have this component and this component. Okay, so let's, let's um, write down this that we are saying here. First, I'm going to erase this. Okay, so another concept that we want to learn from here is just a name. We are going to name, remember that um, according to the second law of Newton, if this object is exerting a force on the inclined plane, what is the inclined plane going to do? The inclined plane is going to exert another force on this object. This force we, that is perpendicular to the plane is going to be called the normal force, okay? And that is why here I use W perpendicular because normal means perpendicular. We borrow that concept from math. And we have here a normal force. What is this force? This is equal to W perpendicular. So we can conclude that in the direction perpendicular to the to the plane, the forces that we have, the addition of those forces will be zero. In other words, I have this component of the weight and this reaction from the, <clears throat> from the inclined plane. So the addition of forces in this direction is zero. And that's why the object is not moving in this direction we are going to learn how the object moves in this direction. So what do we have here? We have a situation where there is this inclined plane, the object, there is this W parallel working. And we said that in this direction, we don't have movement. So this is my W parallel. So we say that there will be a friction, a force of friction here. The force of friction is going to act against the force that tries to move the object. The force that tries to move the object is this one. So which is a force that will try not to move the object is a force that will act in this direction. It will, it will try to, to slow down the movement of the object. So this is going to be our force of friction. Once again, we go to the lab and we measure the force of friction. And what is that we obtain? We obtain that the force of friction is proportional to this force that we have here, to the normal force. Here's the normal force. So we are saying that the force of friction in the lab turns out to be proportional force. And that happens all the time with any combination of surfaces. So if I have, for example, wood against metal, for example, I have mm, some force of friction that will be different than, for example, having wood and plastic. So, um, we find that here, 
we have a coefficient of proportionality, which is different depending on the material of, of depending on the combination of materials that we have. And um, we say that here, the force of friction will be equal to some coefficient that we call mu, this is the Greek letter mu, times the normal force. So this mu that I have here will depend on the combination of materials. And that has to be obtained in the lab or of course it can be global, okay? So I, I need to point out this. Here is the direction of the perpendicular force, right? The normal force is it's, it's going upward, vertical, it's uh, sorry, normal to the surface, to the plane. And here is the direction of the force of friction. So you see that they are making an angle of 40 degrees, uh, sorry, of 90 degrees. That means that they are, they have different directions. So this relationship that we have here do not reflect, do not reflect the directions of the vectors. So this is not a vectorial relationship. It's just a scalar relationship. In other words, I cannot obtain from here the direction of the vector. I have to state that with my words, okay? So I have to say that the force of friction has a direction that is opposing the parallel component of the weight, but the value of the force of friction is proportional to the normal force, okay? Are we okay there? Yes. All right. Great. Um, it's important to mention that the um, this coefficient of friction is always less than one. Okay. Um, if it otherwise, if it were, if it were greater than one, the object could go up, upwards, which is not the case. So the coefficient of friction is always uh, lower than one, much lower than one. Uh, let's see an example to use this uh, force of friction. Okay. So I have this incline plane. Suppose that I have an, an angle of 30 degrees. I have an object. The object has a weight. I can split the weight in two components, the W parallel, the W perpendicular. We know already that this component is there. We need the value of that component, but it's not going to, to move the object up and down because it's going to be um, canceled by, the, um, by this W perpendicular. So we, we have this angle, which is 30 degrees. This is going to be 30 as well. So the value of this force here will be W perpendicular will be equal. Remember that the perpendicular is this guy here, this force here which is adjacent to 30 degrees. So this will be W 
W times, since it is, it is adjacent, is cosine of 30. Now, the value of W parallel will be W times sine of 30. And the value of the force of friction will be mu times W perpendicular. Let's suppose that mu is, for example, 0 0.2. Let me point out that mu doesn't have units. Why is that it doesn't have units? Because mu comes from here. And here I have newtons. And here I have newtons. That means that mu doesn't need units. OK? So let's see what we do with all this. Here's the object, here's the, the incline again. We have here the object. We have, what are the forces that are acting here? The force of friction that we know from here. And also the other force that is acting here is a parallel force, the, this W weight, that this W parallel. So I want to calculate the summation of forces on this object. So one of them will be W parallel. The other one will be the force of friction. Those are the two forces that I care because the others, like we said, are being canceled. So this is equal to what? W parallel is what we have here. That, that will be W times sine of 30 minus the force of friction, which will be what I have here. That will be mu times W perpendicular that we have it from here. So I can write that this will be W cosine of 30. So here I have all the forces acting on this object. And I could calculate this because if I had the weight, let's suppose that the weight W is, for example, two newtons. So I would have two times sine of 30 minus mu, which we said is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 times cosine of 30. And here I have the net force. So I have the net force. And if I have here the weight, which is two newtons, I could obtain from here the mass because I know that W equal to Newton equal mass times G, correct? So I obtain the mass from this relationship. And if I have the acting force here, I could have the net acceleration acting on this object. Am I right? We don't know. Okay. Uh, any question about this? I'm still a bit confused about um, 
Tell me. Like how exactly we were able to figure out how one side was sine 30 plus sine to figure out the... Sum I'm sorry. Do you, mind to, to, do you mind to repeat, please? Yes, of course. Um, I'm still a bit confused about the first sections on how we were able to um, determine the signs. Because I know the, the vectors ah. are just direction. Okay. But do okay. they also kind of act like graphs? Okay, you are referring to how to obtain the sine and cosine, or how to obtain the value of the component? Uh, the value of the component. Okay, let me go through that again, okay? Um, I might be repeating, but um, that's okay. Say that, uh, is it clear what I said about the, the angles? that um, the relationship between angles, like say I have two lines, right? Any two lines. And here I have one line that is perpendicular. Say I call this line A and here I have line B. And I say that here I have line C, which is perpendicular to A. And I will draw another line, which is perpendicular to B. Like for example, this line is perpendicular to B. Let's call it D. So A and D make an angle alpha. And in math, it can be shown that C and D also make an angle alpha. Okay with that? This is yeah. something that, okay, okay. So we have two lines, any two lines, and they make an angle. So the perpendicular to those lines will make the same angle, okay? We are done with that. Everybody? Okay. Now we go to the incline. I will make it bigger. This time. I have here my object. The object has a weight. This weight has two components. This red, com this red component and this green component. So the, the red component and the green component is pretty much like saying your Y and X axis. Exactly, exactly. That's yes. what I was confused about too, but when you actually look at it sideways, you can see the graph with the increasing slope. Okay, that is the case. Yeah, it's a an X and Y component. What happens is that here, I don't need to use the X and Y component. What I'm saying is that the green, the green one is perpendicular to the plane, to this plane. And the pink one is parallel, okay? But yes, the way you said that, who was that? Wilfredo, and the object is at the origin. Well, that doesn't matter. That is not important. Um, we are not talking about the, the position. We want to learn about the net acceleration that there is on this object, okay? So we don't mind it. It could be anywhere here, okay? We are going to learn a little bit about that. But no, there is no origin because I didn't set uh, uh, really X and Y axis, okay? I can think of these two as axis, but uh, it's not that I'm saying here I have a set of axes. All I have is a perpendicular to the plane and a parallel to the plane, which is what happens with uh, X and Y axis. They are at 90 degrees each, right? Yeah, that helps That helps me a little bit to orient myself so I could find the uh, sine of uh, the alpha and the cosine of alpha when I orient myself as a graph, like X and Y. But I know we're talking about perpendicular and stuff like that. Great. Okay. So what we say is that here we know this angle, alpha, is the angle that the, the inclined plane 
is making with the ground. So we are going to use the concept that we just talked about earlier, that this line is perpendicular to this one. And that this line is perpendicular to this one. Okay, I will show that once again. Here's the ground. And here's the weight. They are perpendicular, right? Now, here's the The green component, which is perpendicular to the plane itself, to this plane. Okay, so this angle here, this angle here equals this angle here. Okay, there? Yep. Please tell me. I want you to make. I want to make sure that you're understanding this. It's a it's a uh, math concept or geometry concept, but we need to use it here. Okay. So we end up learning that this angle is alpha as well. So I take now this triangle that there is here. And on this triangle, I have the following. This is my triangle. And I have angle alpha here, this side here. Let me paint it. This side here is opposing angle alpha. So I can say that this side here, since it's opposing, will go with the sign of the angle alpha. And this other sign here is adjacent. So it will go with a cosine of alpha. Everybody sees that this is this angle is this one here. Yeah, I, I can see it a lot better. Okay, okay. So, um, so here I had W, which was the weight. And I have W here, and I have W here, okay? Was that your question? Um, remind me of your name, please. Yes, uh, there. yeah, that was my question. I just um, Trilla, a right? confused. Trilla? Yeah, yeah, but I can see it a lot better now. Okay, everybody has this concept clear, please tell me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Where are the questions? What is W? W is the weight of the object. Who was that? No, it was me. Mm -hmm. Who's this? Alexander? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why does the little triangle have like a W on it? What does that mean? Let's see. I, Alexander, is that you talking? Uh, tell me again what, what your question is, please. Why does the little triangle have W if it represents weight? Like, what does that mean? Um, this triangle here is just for you to see this other triangle, okay? They are the same triangle. 
Now, what we are saying is W is this side of the triangle. We are going to make out of this side, we are going to make the weight of the of the object, okay? But that comes later. First, we want to understand why these sides are W sine and W cosine, okay? Remember that when we had, when we were, when we were learning geometry, we had a triangle and we said that, for example, we had A, B, and C, and we could say that, for example, a, we had this angle alpha, and we all, we were saying that, uh, for example, since A was adjacent to alpha, we could say that A was equal to C cosine of alpha, and we could say that B was C times sine of alpha, correct? So we, we are bringing this concept to this situation. Instead of having C, we have W, and instead of having B, we have this guy, and then we have for cosine instead of um, A, and, and so forth. We are bringing this idea that we develop for, uh, in trigonom and for trigonometric functions, we are using it here. And this is just a representation of the situation here on the inclined plane. Are we okay, Alexander? Yes. All right. Um, okay, any other question regarding this situation with friction? We are going to review that this one on Thursday anyway, and we are going to, to solve problems. But um, right now, do we have any question before we, we finish today? I just have a, a question. Uh, I just have yeah. a doubt. Uh, so you're using W because weight is based off of the mass and the gravity acting on the object. Is that why we're using a W? Exactly, yes. Because that is actually the one force that, that we have to start everything. That's all we have. Uh, it's W, which is the weight of the of the object. That um, the fact that we are splitting that into components, one parallel and one perpendicular, is because it's um, it's functional to our purposes. Okay, and it's functional to what we find in the lab. But um, that's all we have is the weight of the object. Okay, the weight of the object is the one that is going to produce the movement. Okay, and it's the one that is going to produce the friction as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we are going to review this on, on Thursday. Um, I will ask you to please review once again the trigonometric functions, okay? Uh, the other, the other um, question that I have for you that uh, we need to talk on, on Thursday will be the issue of the midterm. So um, I would like to, to have the midterm um, the week before. So check your calendars because um, we need to, to have that, okay? Any question? Okay, okay. So see you on Thursday, okay? Have a good day. Bye, you too.